Hi guys, this is Alex from Mason Lifestyle. I hope you guys are doing well. So earlier this week, I did a video on, hey, I made jeans. And um, it's my first time that I've made jeans. I kind of tossed around it for a long time because I haven't worn jeans in almost like 10 years because everything was either too tight, too loose, um, the inseam was too low or not a enough room for the booty so if you are thinking of perhaps making yourself jeans here are some tips that you can take with you um, as you embark into making jeans so number one i would say number one is pick the right um jeans pattern and guys there are i was researching and there are so many there is your classic five pocket vintage jeans there are stretch jeans there are curvy jeans there are i mean i was able to find almost like 10 and i talked to a lot of different people about what work for them and what work for others i had some people that um, I had talked to someone and she said, I tried the ginger jeans from Classic Core and I could not get them fitted, but I went ahead and had great luck with the Dawn jeans from Megan Nielsen. So it's really different for everybody. I had a hard time um, fitting the Morgan jeans from Classic Core, but I did great with the Butterick McCall's Farmer Pledish pattern which I feel like they're even a little too loose on me now, but hey, I can always take them in. Um, so there's a multitude of jeans out there. High rise, low rise, you know, a completely multitude. And I went ahead and put links to a lot of them on the blog, but um, some of the most common ones that I've seen, the Ash jeans from Megan Nielsen, their stretch jeans, the Dawn jeans from Megan Nielsen, and they are non-stretch jeans. You get quite a bit of a couple of views. You also have the Morgan and Ginger jeans from Classic Core Pattern to guys, and I had a hard time fitting them, but that is me. They can work for you, and the instructions on those jeans are outstanding, so I couldn't fit them this time, but I still have them, and I'm gonna take it another stab at it now that I've made a pair. Um, you also have the charm, um, the Maryland jeans from Charm Patterns. That's very girty. She gets some great reviews. You also have the J. Lee stretch jeans. You have um, the Cashmere She also have the Ames jeans. They're stretch jeans. The Eddie Stone by Itch to Stitch. So there is a multitude of um, patterns out there that you can try. Of course, as always, check the reviews. See if the designer has uh, pictures of someone your size. I'm always huge on that. I had tried to get another pair of jeans from another indie designer, and she have had very few views of someone in my size. I'm size 20. It is what it is. So I was really a little bit reluctant in getting those jeans. I really want to see somebody in my size. You can also try the Fold Line. That is a foldline.com. It's a website in the UK. They also have reviews. You can also try sewingpatternreview.com. That is another website that you can try if you want to check out reviews. Check out perhaps Instagram. There is always some sort of hashtag with everybody tagged in all of their um, under one pattern designer and see, really look at the jeans, um, what people have made and see if this is, um, this is the right pattern for you, especially if you are investing some money on these patterns, right? If you get something from the big four, it may be $2 or six. But for indie jeans, it starts getting into, you know, between eight all the way to like 16 or 24. So make sure that what you are purchasing is something that you will use again and again and again. So number two, pick the right fabric for your uh, pattern. 
make sure that you pick the right fabric that is something that you like that you love the color i picked a 10 ounce um, a weight for my pattern and i do know that they feel a little stiff right now obviously i gotta wear them wash them wear them some more throw them in the dryer and just wear them out just to say soften up or i can just dunk them in coca-cola which it's so odd because i don't drink coca-cola but i guess i can get a liter and just dunk them in there for a while just so they soften up and i may have to do that because they're a little stiff right now um but pick the right fabric for your pattern if it's a stretch fabric um, or a stretch pattern make sure that you read that you read the instructions and see what they suggest and stick with that right number three wash your fabric um, before you start cutting sewing doing anything make sure you wash your fabric in the washer and that you throw the fabric in the dryer they are going to bleed a little or a lot but you really want to make sure that you get all that out and that you also shrink your fabric because i have to say there's nothing worse than um going through the time and expense of making a garment for yourself and fitting it and then it doesn't fit ask me how i know yep i know about that um so make sure that you do that especially when you are making jeans right number four do a little run through with your sewing machine i did i um i have a Bernad b38 i love this machine it has no bells and whistles but it's got some bells and whistles it's got the right bells and whistles that i wanted um and it did great sewing a lighter weight of jeans and actually did great sewing a thicker weight than ounce that i use for my jeans that i showed you guys earlier this week um but i was cognizant of you know using the right needles for what i wanted to do making sure that my top stitching was gonna work well with um my needles just making sure that um, i'm pounding any seams that feel like they're too thick or also trim them just to set myself up for success so make sure you go a little run through right perhaps if you have a beginner's machine right i used to have one of those it may do be able to do it but you may struggle a little so make sure that you um that you do a little run through with your um machine to make sure that it can feed it and that it's going to be okay number five which gets to a little bit of what uh, what i just talked about make sure you have the right tools for the job guys and i'm gonna put a picture up and this is just some of the things that i use but you know you're gonna need a sharp pair of scissors a seam gauge you're gonna need an owl you're gonna need a mallet to perhaps um, pound that um, those thick seams to make sure that your machine can do it you're going to need um, a regular thread for your bobbin and just to sew you are going to need top stitching thread um and there's a multitude of colors so make sure that you try a few i tried gold and i'm like oh no so i did copper you're going to need also need chalk jean needles oh my god you gotta make sure that you have a new pack because if you are sewing and a needle breaks which it may thankfully i didn't have that happen but make sure that you have a nice sharp needle in your sewing machine and that is a jeans needle you're going to um, use it um seam ripper yep seam ripper if you are basting stitches to try the jeans on you're definitely going to need um you're going to need a seam ripper to just kind of take those stitches off and in jean of jean of a jig and i have mine right here is this is a jean of a jig i bought this a long time ago um i've had it for quite some time and if you don't have one of these it just pretty much helps you get your presser feed as you are going starting to sew through some of those thicker seams you put it in the back of your um feed dogs and then you just start stitching but if you don't have this you can also fold some jeans fabric and just put it behind your presser feet and that will start. So 
nice little tool to have. So make sure that you have the right tools for the job. It'll make things easier and there'll be less frustration out there. Um, number six, tissue fit or make a muslin um, before you start cutting your fabric. It took me a while to fit my jeans and I'm still not 100% happy with them now that i worn them for a day and they've gotten a little loose i'm like we can tighten these suckers up and as soon as i have a little start snow starts falling i'm going to tighten them up a little bit more i probably say i can tighten them up half an inch on both sides um so make sure that you tissue fit that you make a muslin because perhaps um, you may not be able to fit the jeans like I had with my first pair, or, um, you know, you can kind of catch all of those things that, um, that you might not be able to do if you just run through and sew the jeans. You know, I had to add, um, a little bit of extra width to my waist, I always do, just so I can um, get my center front and my center back where they need it to be. And that took care of a bunch of things. So make sure that you do a muslin before you cut your first pair. And realize that you may be making one or two muslins. Don't get frustrated, this is gonna take you some time. Number seven, give yourself a one inch seam allowance on the sides. Some jean patterns already include this, which is awesome if they do, but if they don't, make sure you include a one inch um, seam allowance on the sides, not all over the place, but just on those side seams. It will help a lot when you are um, basting you. It's recommended that you baste your jeans and that you try them back on and you know that inch that one inch seam allowance on the sides will um, help you. You can either tighten them up some more or make them a little looser. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, use top stitching, use at the top, top stitching thread when you are top stitching, but at the bottom on your bobbin, make sure that you use a regular thread. And if you are top stitching, make sure that your stitch length is between three millimeters to three and a half millimeters. I like three and a half millimeters on my machine, but just make sure that you grab a scrap piece of um, denim fabric and that you try it to make sure that you are happy with the top stitching and also try different colors of top stitching. I started with the gold, which is a classic, the regular, and I hated it. So I went and got myself a copper color of um, top stitching thread and I liked it a lot more. So make sure that you test that out. Um, use a guide and mark it in your jeans, especially if you are, you know, you have all of those lines right where your zipper is at in the front. You have, I had two lines of top stitching thread and I actually cut it out in a little bit of cardboard and I really used my chalk and lined it out um, to make sure that my top stitching looks really nice because it's in the front right by your crotch. So you wanna make sure that this looks good. So don't be afraid to use um, guides um, and put it in front, use your chalk and go for it, okay? Number 10, practice bar tags also, right? You're gonna have bar tags by your zipper. You're gonna have bar tags on the side seam. You can add bar tags in those areas that might be wearing a lot by your pockets, by your back pockets. Make sure that you test out the bar tags. Um, try different widths, try different lengths. Um, and then, um, also guys, make sure that you have some nice sharp needles. I told you about this already. And of course, you know, don't feel daunted to make jeans. So what if you, you know, your first pair is not like magnificent and perfect, so what? 
Mine is not magnificent and perfect, but I tried it. I did it. So now for the next time, it's going to be easier. I have I remember I posted some pictures of my jeans that I, on Instagram, and I got so many messages of people like, I find this daunting. I'm so scared. Don't be scared. You are not performing surgery on someone. You are not sending a rocket into space. You are making jeans. So this is all a learning lesson. So don't be afraid. All right, guys, have you sewn jeans? What is another good tip that we can share with all of our subscribers? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye.